Steve, thank you for joining us and taking the time to talk to us today. Um, I, I want to start sort of keying off of what's been going on in Egypt and around the globe because definitely food inflation seems to be at least a contributing factor to what we've seen in terms of global unrest. As someone who is so linked to the agricultural industry and crops, you know, your products uh, help crops grow, what do you see for food prices? Do you think we're going to continue to see the same pace of increases that we've seen over the past year? Well, certainly at the farm level, we've seen significant increases in grain prices. What drives our business is the grain market. A relatively small part of that grain price finds its way into the consumer. So uh, food inflation, I think, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an issue, but uh, the, the farm side of that is really a small part of it. Do, what do you foresee for those uh, various grain prices, though? Well, we have high grain prices today because of a combination of factors. Low stocks, uh, that's the inventory of grains, and particularly low stocks in comparison to usage levels. We also have had weather events that have affected crops in Russia, uh, Argentina, and Australia. So we've seen shortfalls in the supply, and we have a growing population. And so that, frankly, reinforces the need for uh, broad use of the products that we make because our products help enhance the yields that accrue to farmers. So it sounds like we're still going to see some, some increases here. Um, on the flip side, one of the feed stocks for your products is natural gas, which has been going in the opposite direction. What's your outlook there? Well, we, we believe that it's a very good time to be a nitrogen producer in the U.S. Uh, Natural gas prices have seemed to stabilize in a range of perhaps four to five dollars, four to six dollars. That's a very uh, attractive cost base for our product. And, and the driver for that has been the advent and exploitation of shale gas uh, in, in the U.S. That, that uh, supply has increased faster and to a greater extent than certainly we anticipated. This is very good for any industry that is a gas-based industry, particularly good for our industry because nitrogen fertilizer is a very substantial user of natural gas. Steve, I want to switch gears a little bit, ask you about M&A activity. Obviously, you've had some recent, relatively recent M&A activity with the acquisition of Terra. Uh, once you work on getting your debt down, do you see going out making some more acquisitions, even internationally, perhaps? Well, our interest, at, Julie, as you said, is immediately to get our debt paid down. We're making very good progress on that. The cash flow in, in our business uh, these days has been excellent, making good progress on that front. As we get down to our targeted levels, we will be looking at our next uh, Steve, uh, investment I'm, opportunities. Tell me, where might you be looking? Are you still looking here at the U.S.? Are you looking internationally? What's the focus? Well, a couple of years ago, I would have said for sure that our interest in future investments was going to be offshore. The U.S. Uh, nitrogen industry, from a demand standpoint, isn't growing. The growth is in other parts of the world, notably South America. However, the, uh, the changing natural gas dynamic in North America has uh, made North American investment, uh, at least economically, more attractive than we would have thought it, it would be a couple of years ago. So we certainly will consider expanding our existing facilities to the extent we can de-bottleneck our plants and get more capacity out of our existing plants. Uh, we, the economics would justify perhaps greenfield expansion in the U.S., but we have uncertainty with regard to environmental policy, so that's not likely to happen in the, in the short run. We're interested in uh, investments offshore if we could find a combination of low-cost feedstock, uh, a favorable and, and stable political and economic environment, proximity to ocean transportation, and reasonable proximity to markets. Those are, those are the main criteria that would drive an offshore investment. So, but just to, to be clear here, in terms of the domestic investment, you're saying that, that the economics right now actually make more sense for you to make your products here in the U.S. and export them overseas, that the, the cost uh, looks better doing it that way perhaps than doing it in an area where the natural gas prices are higher? 
Well, while we do export a significant amount of our phosphate, the U.S. industry is a major net exporter of phosphate. The U.S. market is served about 50 percent by imported nitrogen fertilizers. So uh, any capacity that would be built in North America would likely serve the domestic market and displace imported product. Although on occasion we export nitrogen product from our Louisiana facility. All right, Steve Wilson, we're out of time, but thanks for the uh, crash course here on crop nutrients and what your company is up to. We appreciate it.